Hello YouTube, this is Tutoring Potential. Uh, today we are continuing with the Florida End of Course Geometry Practice Test available from Florida Virtual School. This is part 5 which starts with number 23. Let me zoom in. Twenty-three says the coordinates of three vertices of square A, B, C, D are A, negative 3, 5, B, 1, 7, and C, 3, 3, and it asks for the coordinates of vertex D. Well, what I would do is do a quick sketch. Uh, again, I don't know if they'll give you graph paper, um, but you can do it on online paper. It just has to be a ballpark. Uh, and once you do this, you'll see that to get from point B to point A, I'll go down one, two units, down two units, and left one, two, three, four units. So I'll do the same from C. One, two, one, two, three, four. And that leaves me at negative one, one, which is choice C. The way to do this without graphing it would be to find the slope of side AB, 7 minus 5 over 1 minus negative 3. That's going to come out to 1 half. And then when I take the choices, when I get down to C, when I take those choices, uh, which is one minus three over negative one minus three. Right. Just trying to get my signs right. Those would be the x's. X is negative one. When I get down to choice C, I want the slope to be the same thing, to be one half. It's possible that that could happen somewhere somewhere out here which is why it's best to uh, just go ahead and sketch a graph and and then one of your answers is going to be both match your slope and be graphically in the region that you want 24 reads the coordinates of the vertices of quadrilateral A, B, C, D, R, A, negative 8, 8, B, negative 4, 8, C, negative 4, 4, D, negative 8, 4, and it gives us the vertices of quadrilateral P, Q, R, S. P is negative 10, 10, Q is negative 2, 10, R is negative 2, 2, S is negative 10, 2. Which statement is correct? Well, that's what this is, A, B, C, D and in the dashes are P, Q, R, S. So what I get are two squares, basically. That's what I, that's really graphically all I need to solve this question. 25. One of the properties of squares is that all squares are similar. Because they both they both have the ratio of the sides are equal because all this, the, the all four sides are equal and the all the angles are ninety um, all sides unequal in length well if it had equal right that's what makes this one wrong they're not congruent because PQRS is bigger so to be congruent you have to have the same size and the same shape diagonals of neither quadrilateral are congruent well that would have to be that would have to be both. So all, all squares are similar. Choice A. Okay. 25. Look at the figure below. What type of polygon is shown? Well, first of all, is it concave or convex? Because it sort of folds in on itself it's going to be concave right if you want a mnemonic like it caves in on itself I guess so that eliminates these two now I'm going to count the sides one two three four five 
6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Non is 9, which means that it has to be choice D, which is a hen decagon. Why they want you to know that the prefix for an 11 sided figure is H-E-N-D, I don't know. Um, but that's, you know, if you know non is nine, process of elimination. Uh, why they want you to name, I mean, some courses do, some courses don't. Is it vitally important for a geometry course? Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. Athena. Athena described the figure below as convex, irregular octagon. Is she correct? Well, let's do the sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It is an octagon. It is it is irregular because not all side lengths are equal. These are obviously shorter. Um, but it's not convex. Even if it happens in just one little part, because it caves in on itself, it's concave. Okay. Okay. I'll uh, me back out just once. A regular decagon is shown with isosceles triangles drawn within. What is one way you could find the measure of the exterior angle at the figure? Questions like these, I'd much rather them ask, what is the exterior angle? So the exterior angle is, if I basically continue this, or any one of them, right? I could do it down here, this would be the exterior angle. Okay. I'm going to do this the 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 way <clears throat> excuse me uh, the way that a lot of students find what what the angles in regular figures are. Right, what I do is I take number sides minus two, and multiply that by 180. Right, so if it's it's decagon, it's ten sides, it's ten minus two times 180. So the whole side, the, the entire decagon has 1,440 degrees. I go ahead and divide that by 10, I get 144. So so what's happening here is this is 144. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide that by 2, and I get 72. So this is 72. This is 72. Now I take 180. I subtract 144, and I get this to be 36 degrees. Now, because this is also 72, this this total here, that's, I'm trying to make two marks, would be 144, like 180 minus 144, and I get 36 degrees. So my exterior angle, what I want is 36 degrees. Again, I'd much rather than just ask you that angle because we still haven't answered the question because the way what we've done hasn't isn't described by A, B, C, or D. But let's look at the answer choices. Add all the angles in the triangle together to get 180. That in itself isn't going to give us the exterior angle. Add the base angles to determine the measure of the exterior angle. See, in a sense, you are adding these two angles to get 144 to solve for it, but it, that's that's not the most direct way. That's why these questions are confusing. Find the measure of the non-base angle 
of the isosceles triangle that is congruent to the exterior angle. The non-base angle is this angle at the center, is 36. It is congruent to the exterior angle. That's going to be our answer choice. Subtract the base angles of the triangle from the interior. The, uh, that would be subtracting these from this. That would give us a negative number. But if you ask me to find the exterior angle of a decagon, uh, the first thing I'm going to come up with is not find the measures of the non-base angles of the isosceles triangle that are congruent to the exterior angle. I'm going to start with what I know, which is I, I take the number sides minus 2 times 180 degrees. Basically, I try and solve the figure. Uh, but you could actually do that, get the number, and still get the answer wrong. Um, again, that's, that's the constraints, one of the constraints of a test like this. Let's see what the next one looks like. 27. Let's see. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. Okay. It wants angle F. What I can't, I, it doesn't help me to set these two equal to each other. Um, even if this were symmetric, which it doesn't look to be. But I'm going to use something from the previous, n minus 2 times 180. doesn't have to be a regular figure. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 sides. 6 minus 2 is 4. And 180. So there's 720 degrees in the, in, in the interior of the figure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add everything up. And I'm going to solve for x. And then I'm going to find that expression. I'm going to, I have to do this kind of quick to get it under time. 134 and 128. It's 262. So how many x's do I have? 10, 20, I have 30x. 30x plus 262 minus 8 plus 8 plus 8 again. 262 and 8 is 270. 30x plus 270 is 720. Let me back out. Seven twenty minus two seventy. I get the thirty x equals four fifty. X is fifteen. Sorry about that. If x is fifteen, then angle F is ten times fifteen minus four. 150 minus 4 should give me 146. And I assume I'd write it here, 146. You can't see that, can you? 146. Okay, that last one's a little all over the place. Uh, thanks for watching. Please comment and ask questions, and stay tuned.